OK, hi. Um, I'm John Wiley, and I, uh, I lead the user experience team uh, for Google Search. And um, as Jesse mentioned, uh, perhaps you've noticed some changes happening over the last month or so, um, two months actually, to, to Google Search, uh, to Gmail, to Calendar, um, to Maps, uh, to all of our flagship products. And, uh, and so here today, I'm going to talk a little bit about these changes that are happening and maybe give you some uh, insight into why we're doing it um, and tell you a little bit about how it came about. Uh, and uh, if we have some time, hopefully at the end, uh, if you have any questions for me about the design or Google or search or what have you, we can go through those things. So uh, this is the biggest redesign in Google's history. Uh, covering pretty much all of our uh, consumer-facing products. Um, and uh, you can kind of see, it, you know, Google has been, uh, has been pretty much the same, uh, for, 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 particularly in search, for, uh, for quite a while. So this is search at the beginning of the previous decade. Uh, this, uh, this image comes from Search Engine Land. It's a query for casinos. <laughs> which uh, uh, triggers a few ads here. Um, but this is around February of 2001. And uh, uh, Google, you know, it's pretty much the same thing that uh, you've seen for, for, well, close to a decade, because that search at the beginning of the previous decade, here's search at the end of the previous decade. Uh, so 10 years have gone by, um, and this is, uh, this is around uh, just, just early of 2010. Uh, and again, it's, you know, it's the Google logo, it's the search box, uh, search results in the middle column, some ads, ads on the right. Um, but just flipping back and forth between them, uh, you know, it's blue link, snippet text, green source underneath. Uh, we, apparently, we've gotten rid of some features. Uh, let's see, interest here on ads. I'm not sure what that was um, and some other things. But for the most part, um, the Google Search product stayed pretty much the same. And, and over that time, of course, in that intervening decade, we created uh, a number of other products. We created Google Maps and Gmail uh, and Docs and Calendar and all of those types of things. And, and they, uh, to a certain degree, they inherited from the design uh, of Google Search. And where did the design of Google Search come from? Well, initially, it came from Larry and Sergey. Um, and particularly the homepage, the Google homepage, the iconic centered layout of the Google homepage was created by Sergey. Um, and in, he, it, the reason it's simple is because he didn't know a lot of HTML. Uh, so he just kind of cobbled together what he thought was going to look good. It was nice and clean and simple. And it was, and it was funny because like that, just that logic of it, right? It's like, well, you know, we just need to put a search box on it. That's all we need. It's a search engine. Um, that sort of has stayed with us throughout the time as we've, as we've gone through designs of Google products. It's like, oh, yeah, Google's like this clean, fresh, you know, it's like white space and all these types of things. But a, a lot of it has to do with the fact that, like, coding anything else would have been hard. <laughs> so this is search today. Uh, and this is how search has looked within about the last two months. And uh, some, some, whoa, crazy changes for Google, right? Uh, we have a gray bar and a black bar at the top. Oh my gosh. Um, and, uh, you know, we have a sidebar here. We're using red for highlighting. Uh, is that a black link over there on the left-hand side? My goodness. Uh, crazy town. Uh, but, uh, but we rolled this out, and we did it across a number of products. And, and actually, what's funny about this is uh, um, this redesign of our products, uh, it started it was launched, actually, on uh, the same day as Google+. Plus. Uh, and Google+, Plus, everyone thought, oh, my goodness, like, they've redesigned search to look like Google+. Plus. Um, but actually, this process was, uh, was in parallel. It was just coincidence that we launched them at the same time. And, uh, and, and Google+, Plus has this sort of look and feel. And the reason for that is it's a new product. And uh, before Google+, Plus launched, it actually looked uh, different from what it does today. Uh, but this, uh, this this uh, project that we have uh, actually shaped the look and feel of Google Plus as well, so that all of these products that we have across Google uh, begin to take on a little bit more consistency. So I'm going to share with you 
this is kind of a long running project here. Well, it's not that long. I mean, it's going to be like several months. And we started this, again, we launched in June. Uh, we've got some stuff that went out in July and August. Uh, we're continuing to push changes to Google uh, across all of our products. Uh, so I'm going to share with you kind of the target that we started with back in, uh, in May. And what I'm going to show with you today is, uh, is just some of the things that we're aiming at. Uh, but before I get to those things, uh, and these are some, these are, these are mock-ups and things that haven't yet been seen outside of Google, uh, some caveats. Some of what you see has been launched. So things, if you go right now on your computers and you go to Google search and whatnot, or, or Gmail, uh, actually, um, I think Gmail is opt-in. How many of you have actually turned on the new design? Okay, fair amount, good. Um, and, and calendar as well. So some of this has been launched. Uh, some of it hasn't been launched. Uh, what in these mock-ups, uh, it, it, we haven't gotten there yet. Uh, some of it will never launch. Uh, and that's because designers, you know, we have our magic pixel wands, and uh, we make up things. And, uh, and then, of course, you know, the mock-up has to get implemented by you know, teams of engineers and face the real world and that sort of thing. Um, so some of the things you see here um, will not launch. And, and actually, in the process of launching these things, we hear user feedback, and, and we, we shift these things around a little bit, and we evolve the designs. Um, but you can kind of see what we're aiming at. Also, uh, when you see mock-ups on here, you'll see a, a little label on it that says current state. Uh, that's because this is back. This is actually taken from a presentation that we gave to executives um, uh, several months ago, back in May. And so current state, obviously, is not the current state. It's actually what was the previous state. So, You've seen search, you've been using search. This is actually a, um, a mock-up of what search could look like um, in the nearish future. Uh, not terribly different uh, from what we have today. Uh, search is a, is a well-tried and true uh, software application, uh, so uh, not too many changes. One of the changes we did launch recently was we took the, uh, that green URL, the source link, uh, which, as I said, for well over a decade has been at the bottom of search results, and we actually moved it right up underneath the uh, title. Um, search is a funny beast because that's, it's like, as, you know, as a designer, you know, it's like, am I going to put that in my portfolio? You know, it's like, oh, yes, I, I, I took that green link and I moved it right there underneath the, <laughs> underneath the blue one. So, <laughs> you know. Um, <laughs> badass, huh? <laughs> Um, search is a funny thing because that's, that's a really subtle change. But, but actually, all of the changes that you see uh, within search are, are subtle changes, typically, uh, that can have a huge impact on the user experience uh, in aggregate. Um, if, if you've been using, you know, of course, you may, have, you may not even notice the change until I just pointed it out. Um, but across all of the hundreds of millions of users that Google has, uh, these little changes like this, they can actually have uh, a significant impact. Significant to us, anyway. We, we watch a lot of this pretty carefully. Um, strangely, though, there's some things that don't have a huge impact on the search experience. So you might think that putting a big gray bar across the top of the page, um, which is very visual, a pretty big visual change, uh, which would have a, a significant impact. Um, but, uh, but, but, you know, it, it, it improves the aesthetics of the page, and it looks good, and it, it's a nice sort of, visually, it's a nice header. Um, but it doesn't actually have too much of an impact on, on the day-to-day -day, um, use of, of search. The other thing, I would say, just a kind of a funny story, um, we launched Google Instant at the end of last year. Google Instant is where you, you type uh, and predictions are made and, and the results just pop up, pop up instantly. And um, the funny thing about Instant, uh, before, we, before we launched it, or actually as we embarked on the project, everybody sort of freaked out, right? Because you're typing, and then suddenly results are appearing, and, and, and a lot of people within Google thought that that was going to be extremely distracting for our users, and that was going to be a problem. Uh, but it turns out, as we ran through uh, tons of user research around this, um, most of the user studies that we ran around Google Instant, people would use the product, and we'd be like, hey, so did you notice anything different? And you're like, eh, it's faster, I guess. And to us, it seemed like it was this huge change. You type, and boom, it's gonna, the results come up, right? But to our users, actually, they, 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 they hardly noticed it. Um, uh, technical users noticed it a lot. So within Google, um, our engineers and, and designers, they're like, whoa, this is kind of jarring. You know? um, but, uh, but sort of day-to-day -day use, regular users uh, out in the world, um, they didn't really notice it so much. 
So again, uh, some of these things are really subtle changes, but um, overall we think that they're going to make a, a nice impact on the aesthetic uh, of, the, of the Google product. So let me switch to Maps real quick. Again, this says current state. This isn't the current state. If you go to maps.google.com, we've actually pushed some changes. Um, and here's how it looked before. Here's how it could look um, pretty soon. We're, we're aiming at this again. As I, as I mentioned, some of these things will launch, some won't. But, uh, but this is actually, you know, it's, it's just a... It's just simplifying things. It's putting more focus on it, um, on, the, on the actual map. Uh, it's getting rid of just some of the clutter, uh, cleaning up the information design a little bit, cleaning up the sight lines. One of the things we've introduced as part of this project is an actual grid, uh, <laughs> you know, which is like, again, whoa, really? Uh, uh, duh. Um, but, um, but we actually introduced a grid to, uh, to our design process. And, and for the most part, we're, we're adhering to that grid. We have to break the grid in a couple of places. Um, but uh, that's a big change for us. And again, that just, you know, it's starting to visually bring it together uh, in, a, in a big way. So here's Gmail. Uh, this is a, you know, uh, again, previous to this, the, current, the state of Gmail. And then here's, uh, here's the mock-up, the target mock-up for Gmail. Now this one's evolving uh, a bit more than the other ones. Um, Gmail is a, uh, it's a product in which you live a lot. You spend a lot of your time. You're doing a lot of your work in Gmail. Um, you're very close to it. And you, uh, you, you, know, you sort of form a bond with the software uh, over time. And so people have a lot of ownership over, over Gmail um, you know, through theming and things like that. But even just the application itself, people feel a lot of ownership about the interface. And so I, I actually, uh, when Alexa was speaking about, um, about feedback coming in from all kinds of directions, um, you know, it's something that, that really resonates with me. There's a, you get a lot of feedback. People get very passionate about their software applications, about Gmail, about things that they use every day. They, they get deeply passionate about that. And, um, and so if we change something, if we, if we, you know, whether it's to search or Gmail, um, there's a lot of people who get really passionate about it. And they'll, they'll be passionate about it in the positive sometimes, hopefully most of the time if we've done our jobs right. Uh, but sometimes they'll be, they'll be very passionate, you know, saying, hey, you've, you've actually gone the wrong direction on this. Uh, and we try to listen to that as much as we can and, um, and, and make changes and make updates. Um, the funny thing about this uh, design, so we, uh, we, when, we have our, uh, when we have new products at Google, uh, we do something called, uh, what we call internally called dog fooding. Uh, it's, it's eating your own dog food. So we take all of our products and we just turn them loose on, on Googlers. Um, and that's a, that's a it's not, obviously it's not a representative sample, but it gives us good trends. Um, and we have about you know, 20,000 plus people worldwide. Um, so we can sort of instantly start getting feedback. And the funny thing about this, uh, this design is uh, we, we turned this on for Googlers and uh, there was just ah, uproar, crazy town, right? You know, just like people were like, whoa, white space everywhere. And, and just going back to the previous one, right? It's like, it's very dense. Um, and, you know, we had a lot of, uh, Googlers can be, again, they're very passionate in their feedback, uh, particularly at Google, because they, they feel like they, you know, they work at Google, they're, they're very close to the product. So we got a lot of really passionate feedback about this on day one. And on day two, that feedback sort of trailed off a little bit. And on day three, the people who had been giving us very passionate feedback around, like, turn it off, my eyes are bleeding. Um, <laughs> On day three, uh, some of those people came back to us and they were like, actually, it looks pretty good. <laughs> looks pretty good. I got used to it. I got used to it. Or they would go back to their outside, the, the account that they had, their personal account that was outside you know, um, our dog fooding, and it, was, it, it still looked you know, like the previous version. And they would say, oh my god, I went back to that. Oh, please, launch the new one. I, just, I can't take it. You know? um, and so there is this aspect, obviously, of change of version. Uh, we know that you know you introduce something new to people, um, they will just immediately be averse to it, even if it's uh, even if in the long run, even if through multiple exposure to it, they'll they'll actually end up liking it. Um, now we can't, I mean, you can't just automatically take any kind of feedback that you get about a design, and be like, oh, let's just change your version, whatever. You're gonna like it sometime. Um, <laughs> you know, obviously you have to be aware that that sometimes there's a trend, and that trend, you know, it isn't going to the positive. It's staying. That, that they're continually averse to it. Uh, and and we, we try to keep an eye on that. And the things that have come up during this uh, process, both in releasing this, uh, these new designs out to the world, but also internally, uh, we, do hit, we do hear common themes sometimes. Um, 
particularly around like the contrast of this design on various screen types. So, you know, designers, we have, you know, the nice, nice screens, nice LCDs, you know, the MacBooks or the cinema displays, what have you, uh, have really good contrast displays um, that we create on. And, and not all of our users obviously have high contrast displays. And so we have to think really carefully about contrast. Um, but then again, you're balancing that against what's important, right? You want to try to create focus and balance on the page. Um, you know, as designers, we're always weighing these trade-offs about where do I, where do I want to drive focus and where, what's important to me here? And, and where's the focus on this page? What's well, a big red compose button? Um, you know, can't miss it. And I'll talk a little bit more about uh, focus uh, towards the end. Uh, this is Calendar. Uh, this is what uh, Calendar is. And, and then you can opt into a new version of Calendar. And um, uh, this, is the, this was the target design for Calendar. And I, I, when I saw this, I was just like, just going from this to this, like the first time I saw this mock-up, I was like, oh, oh, it just, it's like a breath of fresh air, right? Um, it just looks much cleaner and sharper. Um, and it looks like a place I want to spend some more time. So initial reactions, as I said, we launched this. Um, at the end of June, beginning of July. And uh, this last one is from Michael Leggett, who's a lead designer. Uh, he's, he designed Gmail. Uh, most recently, he worked on Gmail. He's worked on a lot of our applications, uh, leading the design of our apps. Um, and he's working on some other things that uh, we haven't released to the world yet. And um, I think this sum, summed it up, I think, for a lot of us who have been working at Google. I've been at Google for, for five years now as a designer. Um, We've just been given the authority to do something bold with our design. <laughs> Who could have granted us that authority? Larry Page. So <laughs> I'll just go through the timeline here, and you can judge for yourself. Um, Larry likes speed. So Larry, Larry likes things to be fast. Um, Google is a pretty much the, the premier example of this. Uh, we, we, we stress a lot about speed and making search work really fast for people, but not just search, all of the applications. So, and a lot of this has to go right back to the founders, both Larry and Sergey. Um, they like speed, but not only speed in our applications, but they're, they're obsessed with speed just internally at Google, just getting things done. So on January 20th of this year, Google announced that Larry Page, uh, founder, uh, part of the triumvirate of Larry, Sergey, and Eric Schmidt, uh, that Larry will become CEO. So that was in January. On April 4th of this year, Larry Page became CEO of Google. On April 4th of this year, at Larry's direction, we initiated a complete redesign of all of the products. <laughs> this came as a bit of a surprise to us. Uh, we didn't really, in the design side, it wasn't like, you know, there wasn't like this kind of buildup of, hey, I think we might want to redesign our products and like make them more beautiful and aesthetically pleasing and could y'all think about that for a little bit, you know, and let's just, you know, it was, it was more like, all right, guys, uh, we need to redesign all of our products, um, you know, and you need to do it by this summer. Uh, so less than three months later, we launched a redesign of Search and Maps, uh, flagship products. And two days later after that, we launched redesign previews of Gmail and Calendar that people could opt into. Um, it's a pretty big mobilization uh, to, to make these changes. Um, it, again, it's one of those things where you know, these, these products have been around for quite some time. They, they sort of have this legacy aspect to them. They have momentum, right? You have these products have momentum. It's, it, they're, they're ships. It's hard to turn on a dime. Um, but you really can't explain that to Larry. <laughs> you can't, I mean, you, you can't say, hey, it's kind of hard to do. He's just like, huh? What? You know, go. Um, so, uh, so 
you know, when when Sir when Larry made the call, uh, and he actually, uh, you know, he brought together all the uh, all of his all of his SVPs and told them this, and then, uh, you know, this we we actually all the designers got into a room, all the user experience designers, product designers um, across the company. Uh, we kind of felt like we were the dog that caught the car, because uh, we were just kind of like, ah, oh, hey, what? Uh, <laughs> We were let out of our cage, uh, and we're like, oh, this is the light. Um, uh, because, you know, as designers at Google, we've, we've, uh, we sort of struggled this, with this for, um, well, for years. Um, you know, it wasn't like all the designers at Google were like, oh, yeah, it looks gorgeous. Um, you know, uh, uh, it was just that, you know, there's, there's priorities in any company about, you know, what it is you want to want to move forward on, what you want to stress, what do you want to make, you know, your thing. And, uh, and also, uh, you have to understand, I think, also, you, you have to understand how, how Google functions, right, um, and how Google is kind of organized, which is to say it's not entirely organized. Um, it, it functions a lot more like a series of startups, really. Um, than, than sort of any sort of you know, uh, top-down kind of company, which makes it difficult to, to have this kind of like design vision permeate through all of these different products. Um, and that works really well for a lot of things that we do, this sort of um, you know, lack of dependency you know, from one thing to another. So search can do its thing, and maps can do its thing, and they can all move forward, and Gmail can move forward, and they can move forward fast, get things done fast, get those features out to users quickly. But when it comes to having like a co coherent design vision and launching that across all these products in one go, that, that really requires um, that, that really requires some vision and leadership from the top. And so when Larry became CEO, this is the thing he did. He, uh, in addition to a number of other things he did, which has been widely reported, but um, you know he kicked this in gear and he gave the authority, he gave the power, right, uh, to the teams to say yes, it's okay. You can actually take a moment, a moment being a few months and put all this together and make it happen and roll it out across all of, all of those products simultaneously. So let me tell you a little bit about how it did happen. Um, so early part of the year, uh, Larry actually reached out to Google Creative Lab. So Google Creative Lab is, is a really interesting um, organization within Google. Uh, it's, it's headed by Andy Burnt, um, and it's a collection of just kick-ass designers, uh, and initially their 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 sort of remit was to uh, help Google really market uh, its products, but do it in a very googly kind of way. Uh, so it's an, it's kind of a initially it was conceived as sort of an in-house marketing agency, um, but again they've got just you know amazing amazing design talent in New York at our New York office. And so th the funny thing about Google Creative Lab is that they are, they are an outside perspective in a way. I mean, they're within Google, but they're not necessarily part of, as I was saying, like, you know, these different startups, right? Um, so as a, as a search designer, as the, as the head of design for search, I'm sort of beholden to the search organization. You know, I'm there to, to, to you know, move forward the user experience of Google Search. Um, and the same is true for all of the other product designers for the most part across our products. Um, and so to really sort of have this kind of over Google uh, vision, uh, Larry reached out to Andy and his team and Chris Wiggins, um, who actually wrote the blog post uh, back in June about this change. Chris Wiggins uh, on, on the Creative Lab team, who's actually led a lot of this project, uh, for an outside perspective. And, and Larry's like, how can we do this? Like, how, what, what might a a vision for Google look like, a, a cohesive, well-designed products, you know, what might that look like? And so he reached out to them and they, they cooked it up. And, and you know, the uh, Creative Lab, they're, they're responsible for like uh, the Parisian Love uh, uh, Super Bowl commercial. Uh, I think it, it was aired, was it this year? Earlier this year, maybe last year. Um, and uh, they also did uh, a number of products. They've done a lot of stuff for Chrome. They did the Wilderness Downtown um, partnership with Arcade Fire. Um, so a lot of these, uh, you know, just uh, amazing marketing materials, great design. And so the Creative Lab, they got together and they, they created a vision for how uh, Google products might look as just this cohesive um, series of products. And, but, but the thing is, uh, earlier I mentioned, you know, it's like, you know, 
you, you wave your magic pixie pixel dust wand, and, and, but you have to actually get these designs into the hands of users. You actually have to execute on them. You actually have to turn it into reality. So the next thing they did is they, they, we brought in product designers. Uh, and that would be people like myself, people like Michael Leggett, uh, who've been working with these engineering teams, product, uh, product management teams for years and years and years, and, uh, and from search maps and stuff. And we put it all together, um, and we started iterating. We started refining, refine, refine, refine. But again, quickly, right? Got to get this thing out the door. Uh, so we took all this vision. We sat down. We locked ourselves in rooms, and we just refined on this design as quickly as we could. Uh, created a, a, you know, those, those mock-ups you saw earlier, created these reference set of designs and then sort of set those uh, onto the world um, through, uh, through the productionizing of that with, uh, with the engineering teams. So the, when, we, when Creative Lab and the product designers worked together, we, we came up with basically three tenets for, uh, for the designs, focused, effortless, and elastic. Uh, I'll talk about a little bit about effortless first. So, uh, here's an example of, of, of just one of the things that we were thinking about in terms of effortless. So this is uh, Gmail, and there's, there's, there's very few buttons. There's a handful of buttons at the top, uh, one to select, one to refresh, uh, to page through your series of meshes, and then this little gear, which, uh, you know, settings and whatnot. And in current Gmail, when you check, there's a ton of buttons up there. And what we did was we said, well, when you click on an email, like, then these other actions should appear. Um, now this seems, you know, progressive disclosure, et cetera, et cetera. We all know this, um, but but these are just some things that we're trying to get into our Google into the product. So it's like, yeah, it's it's kind of effortless. You don't really have to think about it. It's like it's there when you need it. Uh, focused. So I mentioned this earlier about the just that giant compose button um, and the use of color. So there's a, a bit of a muted use of color. There's a lot of there was a lot of color going on in, in Google's products previously, and so we removed some of that color, and we've made a a, a deliberate choice to when we use color, to use it in, in very specific, very deliberate ways so that you know that when color is being used, it actually it conveys a meaning, conveys things. Um, the funny thing, th these are uh, a series of buttons that we have throughout our products now, um, and we'll, we'll have these products more, but like the big action to make something is a big red button. And this is, you know, this is a little bit, um, this has caused some debate. It's a little bit of a bold decision. Uh, why do you want like a big red button on the page? Um, and then if you're going to do something like search, just do it, right? Or yes, OK, submit, et cetera, right? And that's a blue button. Um, just get it done. And, uh, and then if you're going to create something that's like going to have an audience to it, then we're thinking, well, maybe you should use green, right? And, that, and have these things. And have this just kind of like this notion of a story that goes throughout, of our, throughout all of our products. Um, and, and this is the kind of, again, this is kind of focus that we're trying to, to create from these products. The funny thing about this, we didn't, we didn't tell anybody about this, but I think there's a thread on Quora where somebody's like, what do these colors mean? And some you know, person said, well, I think it means this, and he, he pretty much nailed it. So I think, good job us that we actually were able to create that vision. Uh, two minutes, 20 seconds left, so elastic. I'm gonna show you a demo right now. Uh, let's see if my computer will do this. Then we do this, and oh, come on. Aha, all right, great. So this is a, um, this is a demonstration. And by elastic, and, and this is clearly the hardest part, and we haven't quite built some of this into it, um, we, want, we have a vision for Google products that they work at any size. You know, we, we have users that have giant 30-inch uh, screens, uh, or two 30-inch screens, Larry Page. Um, and we have users, obviously, that have like, tablets and smaller screens. 800 by 600 is actually fairly common for, uh, for Google Search because there's so many users throughout the world. Uh, and so what we had this vision was, you know, how could, we, how could we actually make these applications work across all these different, um, these different dimensions? And so, uh, again, this is just concept. This isn't like we're promising to do this in Gmail tomorrow. I'm just showing you a, a, a demo. Um, but the idea being is that you know, as, you, as the UI gets smaller, then it starts adapting to the, uh, the screen size. And so it might even transition into the mobile version uh, at some point. Not that you would necessarily need the mobile version on the desktop, but, um, but you could have it function this way. And, uh, and if, you, if, if you have the room for more white space and more, you know, more breathing room and, and a place for your eye to land, then, then we'll provide that to you. 
Uh, when we showed this to Larry, um, we went through this whole presentation with Larry. We showed him all this. We showed him the demo. We walked out of it. And Alan Eustace, who's the um, uh, senior vice president of knowledge at Google, uh, he said, I, I think that is the happiest I've ever seen Larry leave a meeting. To think that designers came in at Google and made this presentation and created this vision and told a story and it had that effect and it's having that effect in our company, it's having that effect on our users uh, is really exciting for us. This is a great time to be let out of the cage. So I have six seconds left. <laughs> so I'm gonna go really quick through this. How we doing? Uh, good to see that Google finally seems to be listening to the designers. Simplicity definitely looks more appealing. And lo, Google designers discovered the power of white space. And we added it everywhere. <laughs> Negative space appear, type settle, tone soften, elements aligned. Designers are doing good. This is good work, John Gruber. Uh, John Gruber, daring fire and ball. He's, he's kind of a tough critic, so good, good feedback from John. And then Koi Vin. Um, a newfound respect for the intangible. So we're really excited about the direction we're heading, uh, and I thank you for giving me the opportunity to come and tell you a little bit about it today.